Owning a traditional sailboat requires extra maintenance. The wooden spars, mast, gaff, bowsprit have to be protected from dry rot, termites, cracking, etc. Periodically we apply a mixture of linseed oil and varnish to keep the wood in good condition. To work on the gaff we have to unlace the head of the mainsail first. Put it a little bit higher, you know, lift it up. That's good. Right here. A little bit. And right now I'm just sanding a few little spots and I'm gonna put that finish on it. You always put a, a covering over the sail, so if there is any kind of drips, it protects the sail. Because even a sail, believe it or not, that mainsail is uh, also uh, 27 years old. Although we have another one, brand new, downstairs put away. <laughs> we're, we, we're waiting until this one wears but out. This one is still <laughs> in a very uh, workable shape. We always took good care of it, uh, always cover it, and so on. So uh, we got our money's worth. The gaff is 27 years old, and we built it on board in Hawaii to fit our new mainsail. It's 17 feet long and is laminated out of clear, kiln-dried Douglas fir. Getting emerald steel ready to sail is quite a task. Even though she's only 38 feet, she's heavily built with a large gaff-headed mainsail of 10 ounce. She has a 22-foot boom and a solid wood gaff which has some weight behind it. To lift the mainsail up, it takes some doing. She's built for long ocean passages though, and once the sails are set, there's not that much sail tending to do. Jules has his work cut out for him. Although he enjoys it, things are not as easy or fast as when he was 35. Little by little, the mainsail goes up. And after swedging her up tight, she's ready to sail. San Diego South Bay is a large body of water that throughout the week you have pretty much to yourself. It's a good place to go sailing and test your rig to make sure everything is running smoothly.
same time, we run her on several different headings to check our compass deviation and move the compensation magnets as required. Those two small white rectangles are the compensating magnets. One is for north-south direction and one is for east-west. By moving them, you can minimize your compass deviation. Today with GPS, it's much easier to figure out your compass deviation than in the past when you had to use charts and a fixed point on shore to determine your course. It's a good idea to do it periodically because anytime you change things on board, such as moving equipment around, adding electronics, or welding, it can change your magnetic deviation. You'd be surprised how many boaters go out on the ocean depending strictly on their electronics and knowing nothing about compass deviation. God help them if they ever have to depend strictly on their compass because the sea can be very unforgiving to people that are unprepared. Okay guys, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please don't forget to leave a comment and a thumb up. And as always, thanks so much to all of you that support our channel through PayPal and Patreon. We appreciate you guys so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.